Welcome to Night Shadows. I'm Stuart Best. Where the paranormal is normal. Where that which you thought you knew, you didn't. And where the future can be known, if you know exactly where to look. Well, good evening, everyone, and thanks for tuning in and listening. And uh, we have Larry on his mountaintop, spyglass is on. Hi, Larry, how are you doing down there? Oh, hanging in. How's it going? No, slow but sure. Getting out the new uh, prophetic insight. I'm not quite sure if it's up yet, but we have a new Twilight 2 that will be up in a few days. And that's free for all people who join the membership site. And by the way, folks, uh, there's a ton of stuff on that membership site. It's nine ninety five a month. It's virtually peanuts for the amount of effort and work that we put into it. It's what you would call low pay per hour. It's a labor of love for the Lord that we put it up there, and I just wish more people would actually go there and take a look. And, and by the way, folks, the ones who are members, uh, if you would email and tell us what you actually think of the membership site, if you would recommend it to others, or if you wouldn't, we don't want, uh, you know, uh, we would rather have the absolute truth. What can we do to improve it? What we can do to make it better or, or easier to use? Some of these uh, membership sites, it's software, it's special software, and uh, it's quite expensive. Uh, and uh, it's not always what I would consider the most attractive, although you do have tons of information there. And uh, Patty has put up some videos to show people how to use it and and how to find stuff. And there's, I, I, I don't know how to impress people enough of the stuff that's on there that you can go and read. Uh, a lot of truth information, and truth, by the way, as Larry will tell you, is fading fast. The censorship, the shadow banning, uh, everything is being destroyed because the New World Order has to do that. There can be no truth in the New World Order. It's like Orwell's 1984, and it's coming to pass right now. And uh, I think... Uh, uh, Wells knew what he was talking about, 1984. I think he really knew what was going on on Orwell's uh, 1984, rather. Anyway, uh, before we get rolling, I mentioned the perfect scam in the headline. The perfect scam continues. The American people are not paying any attention as the noose tightens around their freedom neck. Uh, they don't. They're losing their freedoms one by one. And it's uh, it's very, very sad to watch. But the perfect scam is actually the matrix itself that you were born into, grew up in, work in, and eventually die in the matrix. This matrix blinds everyone, as Jesus said. Uh, he said we're in a prison house. What he called it, a prison house. And blind, he called humanity blind. Uh, and he's the only one who came to get us out. And that's why there is no other name under the heavens by which anyone can be saved. It's because he is the creator. And with foreknowledge, new humanity was going to fall. So a lot of people would say, well, why in the world would he, would he put a tree in the Garden of Eden if he knew they were going to eat of it? And the answer is true love, pure love is totally 100% transparent. And he warned the people back then, Adam and Eve, don't eat of that tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now, a lot of people just mocked that. And they say, well, it must have been just symbolic. It doesn't really mean what it says. Yes, it means exactly what it says. I don't know whether the, how the... Uh, fruit worked or what the ingestion of it was, symbolic or not, it radically changed and lowered mankind's frequency. He's in a frequency matrix from which he cannot escape. When you die, you don't escape the lower frequency matrix. You simply go to a lower frequency matrix. 
It's an old man who said, life is hard, life is tough, and then you die and go to a worse place. Well, that's absolutely truth. That's exactly what the Bible says. That's why it is so important for people to understand what Jesus came to do. And believing in Christianity or any other religion is is uh, kind of, uh, how do I word this? Part of the overlord's deceptions. When Jesus said that mankind is under the influence of Satan, that old serpent who deceiveth the whole world, he wasn't fooling one bit. And the book of Revelation tells you that Christianity itself would be twisted and perverted to such a degree it actually becomes a monster. Find that in the book of Revelation. Why is that true? Well, because the people who run the matrix don't want you to get out of it. That's why I wrote the book Frequency, and I'm working on book two, by the way, uh, about the mind matrix and how people are actually blinded, and you can prove it, absolutely prove all this stuff. And This is one of the reasons I took the approach I did, and other people have been uh, told, and I remember, I think it was, when was that? Was that the last show, Larry, where I read that uh, word of the Lord about frequency? I think it was. Wasn't it last week or something? Yeah, yeah, I believe it was. They're very interesting. Well, it's true. You know, that's, and this is uh, one of the things that people are just, I don't know, not paying much attention to. Maybe I'm preaching to the choir. Uh, something else. And Larry, I want you to comment on this one. This is important. April 6th, which is tomorrow, Saturday, some say is the first day of the 71st year based upon Nisan 1, which is the first day of the first month. If it is true, then tomorrow is what they call a rollover day, and things in sign should start to roll like Obama being in Germany, visiting with Merkel. And they say will visit is... uh, You may remember, I think it was his acceptance speech or one of those speeches, he had built the Temple of Zeus. Remember that, Larry? Oh, yeah. He gave a speech on it. Now, the Temple of Zeus, or Pergamos, really is what it is, seat of Satan. Uh, So why is Obama... On this rollover day, and by the way, Larry reminded me, we got to talk about what is a glitch in the system that may be very, very important for everybody listening. Your phones, your GPS, and all that may get totally messed up. Evidently, it's kind of like uh, the year 2000 rollover. And a lot of people poo-pooed that, and they said, well, nothing happened, blah, blah, blah. Well, actually, it did, and the only reason a whole lot more didn't happen was because they had uh, programmers working day and night for almost a year trying to uh, overcome a glitch in the system. And I know for a fact it was real because I had a, um, I don't know what you call it, a bookkeeping program or something like that called Cash Graph. It was an excellent program on rollover day, January 1, it crashed and could never get it back. So it was real, folks. It was all real. And they're saying this is real, this thing that's coming up. I don't know if it is or not. But anyway, back to Obama. Why is he in Germany, and why would he once again go visit the Temple of Zeus? Uh, And remember what the Lord had to say about that. Uh, And the other thing that's kind of interesting about this, what Obama is doing is totally illegal for an American, private American citizen to be making foreign policy decisions or discussion policy with world leaders. And yet Obama is doing this all the time. No one is saying anything about it. In total violation of the Logan Act, which was brought up by the Democrats when they were going after Michael Flynn. 
And, of course, Mike Flynn knew all about where the skeletons were in Washington, especially it was said, anyway, concerning child sex trafficking, pedophilia. He knew all about that. They had to get rid of him. They sidelined him. Anyway, so why is Obama over there? Well, is it possible he really is the man of lawlessness, in spite of everyone's denial? The Bible says Antichrist comes out of America, Babylon, and he is called Lucifer. I want to read to you Isaiah chapter 14, just a little bit of it, and I'm going to read the whole thing. Thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon, and say, How has the oppressor ceased? The golden city ceased. The Lord has broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers. He who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke, he that ruled the nations in anger is persecuted, none hindereth. The whole earth is rest and is quiet. They break forth into singing. Yea, the fir trees rejoice at thee, and the cedars of Lebanon, saying, Since thou art laid down, no fella is come up against us. Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirreth up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth. It has raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. Now, I got to, I don't know what Larry might think of this. It's just something that came to me. This might be a reference to the resurrection of the dead and the changeover where Obama comes into power if the pre-trip rapture concept could be true. We don't know that it is. Anyway, all they that speak and say unto thee, Art thou also become weak as we? Art thou become like unto us? Thy pomp is brought down to the grave, and the noise of thy voils. The worm is spread unto thee, and the worms cover thee. How art thou fallen from heaven? O Lucifer, son of the morning, how art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, I will be like the Most High, yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man, man, remember that, is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms? that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house of his prisoners, all the kings of the nations, even all of them, lie in glory, every one in his own house. But thou art cast out of thy grave like an abominable branch and a remnant of those that are slain, thrust through with a sword, to go down to the stones of the pit as a carcass trodden under feet. Thou shalt not be joined with them in burial, because thou hast destroyed thy land, that would be America Babylon, and slain thy people, that would be the persecution that's coming, folks. The seed of evildoers shall not be renowned. Prepare slaughter for his children, for the iniquity of their fathers. They do not rise, nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the earth with cities. For I will rise up against them, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will cut off from Babylon the name, the remnant, the son, the nephew, saith the Lord. I will also make it a possession for the bittern, the pools of water, and I will sweep it with the besom of destruction. The Lord of hosts has sworn, saying, Surely, as I have thought, so shall it come to pass. As I have proposed, so shall it stand. And I will break the Assyrian in my land, and upon my mountains tread him underfoot, 
Then shall his yoke depart from off them, and his burden depart from off their shoulders. This is the purpose that is proposed upon the whole earth. This is the hand that stretched out upon all the nations, for the Lord of hosts has proposed it. Who shall disannul it? And his hand is stretched out, and who is going to turn it back? Isn't that interesting? When you tie this to Obama, with all the visions of many, many Christians who said he is the lawless one, and then when Trump goes, Obama will come back into power. We don't know exactly how, but I know a lot of people mock at that, and they say, no, never going to happen, no way. Be careful. We don't know that. And with what's going on, with him going all over the world, basically follows Trump around. <laughs> what do you think, Larry? Well, it's really interesting that uh, not only does he follow Trump, a lot of times he'll take a week tour around the world just ahead of Trump and telling, basically telling uh, world leaders not to pay any attention to Trump, that he's only temporary. So I guess we'll just have to see. One of the interesting things is, uh, I've, you know, we're only being notified about this uh, GPS rollover thing. Uh, yes. One day in advance, basically. And what's interesting, they've already gave it a title today. I saw it was Y two K nineteen twenty nineteen. Oh, really? And uh, yeah, Y two K twenty nineteen. So that's the new title they've gave it. And uh, for people that don't know, uh, it first popped up on uh, the Q alert. And uh, then I've traced it to some different sites. But the headline basically was Sat News and Power Grids Could Go Haywire This Weekend, Experts Warn, as GPS rollover bug on April the 6th, 2019. And so that was April the 5th when they put that out. And what they're basically talking about is, uh, and I do remember the time you're talking about uh, 1999 going into 2000. Yes. Uh, we called that Y2K, and uh, yes. some have said that was a dress rehearsal, and everybody was getting ready. And and uh, <clears throat> Clinton, under the uh, you know the Clinton administration, they did spend a lot of money and do some fixing before that happened. And well, we went on by without a lot of trouble. But uh, suddenly, right out of nowhere, it seems, uh, you know, they're talking about this thing expecting satellite navigations and power grids and. I guess anything computer connected anywhere in the world could begin to glitch. And I'll tell you what's odd is the last few days I've been having a lot of problems with connectivity with the satellites. And I'm also, my computer is showing that I'm in mountain time zone. In other words, my computer is one hour ahead of the time that it really is where I'm sitting in my chair. And so I'm already glitching a little, but, uh, you know, I, I, all we can do is tell people to watch for problems with their cell phones, uh, their communication systems, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But I find it odd, Stuart, and what do you think, that they would give us 24-hour warning or even less almost for this to happen? Well, it makes you wonder if this is not going to – now, if it can affect the power grids, this could be a cascading event, and this could be a, a power outage event. So I guess my concept would be that uh, people want to have their water uh, on hand. And, uh, folks, a lot of people don't realize, uh, but if you have a power outage and you're going to be without power for a long time or even a week or whatever, uh, you've got plenty of places you can store water. Most people have a bathtub. You just put fill it up with water. Almost everyone has a water heater. You can actually drain that water heater. You need water to live. You don't need water to bathe and all that. You can do what they call, uh, I don't know, sponge bath or whatever. There are a lot of ways that you can uh, save your water for um, minimal cooking and mainly for drinking because you can't live very long without water. If this is a warning of a power outage, which it could be, uh, I don't know, I guess, what do you think, Larry? Should people just turn off their computers tomorrow and shut them down, disconnect? Well, I don't know. This isn't related to an EMP, is it? Uh, no, it doesn't seem to be EMP related. It seems to be a bug in the uh, cyber world 
uh, and it, this could, Stuart, literally somehow be connected to uh, what's been better known as Stuxnet, because if you'll remember, uh, yes, you know, McAfee, McAfee, and uh, uh, Kropasky out of Russia has warned that uh, Stuxnet once enter, once entered. Uh, into the system, which happened with the Iranian deal, that it could never be taken out, and that it would change and mar, and and keep moving on and doing things we have no knowledge of. So uh, I don't oh. know. Maybe we're getting a little deep with this, but you don't know. Well, you just don't know. All people can do is be prepared. And suddenly, if you wake up and there's no electricity, may you might know why. But I, I don't think it's a problem like an EMP. It's more like uh, the power just goes out, or you start having glitches, uh, you know, with your time frame, your uh, connectivity, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, I noticed today it was real slow for us up here. Uh, computers were taking forever to do things, or at least mine was. And, uh, you know, it's just, well, there's a lot of glitches. Of course, we all have mental glitches, according to the Lord. So it just, uh-huh. you know, it, it just multiplies, I guess, into uh, computer systems. But, yeah, folks, be be aware that this could snowball. It may be a warning of something they're going to try. Now, remember possibly tying this back into Venezuela and the power outages they were having. Because, remember, they were some of the people, and I can Larry, you probably remember much better than I do. They were saying that Venezuelan was a test case for us. And they were practicing on Venezuelan power. Yeah, I I remember hearing that. And, of course, uh, Russia and China and Venezuela are still talking the fact that that this has been an activity of the U.S. or something that was uh, what Maduro was calling the U.S. using cybernetic and electromagnetic war weapons against infrastructure. Yeah. So let's go into Venezuela a bit, because that seems to be getting worse. Uh, I've been getting reports just the other day of more. Uh, in fact, here's the headline. Venezuelan deputy minister says more Russian troops will arrive. Moscow. Venezuela's deputy foreign minister, Ivan Gill, said on Thursday he does not rule out that more Russian military personnel, which means they are going to, may arrive in Venezuela under agreements already concluded with Russia. Interfax News Agency reported. Deputy minister also said Russian forces will stay in Venezuela as long as needed. And there is no set period for their stay. The group of military specialists in Venezuela, in the context of our agreements and contracts for military technical cooperation. Earlier, the Kremlin said Russian military specialists are in Venezuela to service pre-existing contracts for the supply of Russian arms. What do you think, Larry? And I also read an article about China was bringing in more troops. This does not sound good. Well, uh, it sounds like uh, where has our intel agency been for the last two years? I know where they've been. They've all been attacking Trump. They haven't been watching our back door. And now we almost are having a launch pad for an invasion Right in our back door. Isn't that interesting? And, of course, uh, the deep state loves it. This is their plan. But uh, what's interesting is the fact that Venezuela now has, uh, we know that they have multiple thousands of uh, Cuban troops. Uh, They have uh, Cuban security forces. I've heard that they have Cuban intelligence. Uh, They've got the Russians. You just read the article on that with more coming. Uh, I've seen the photographs, and I've seen the data uh, and you've seen the photographs of uh, yes. Chinese troops in Venezuela, also convoys of Chinese anti-ship missiles uh, in Venezuela, convoying towards the coast to defend Venezuela from a possible naval blockade or a naval uh, assault on an invasion. Uh, Stuart, 
sure, you know, the Iranian, we know there's some Iranians there. We know that Hezbollah has people there. Uh, this all links in with the drug cartels and the, the line of terrorism and et cetera, all the way to the border itself of the United States and only into our own country. Matter of fact, what's so interesting, uh, the Serbian uh, uh, premier, I believe it was today on One American News, warned America. He said, let me tell you something, America. He said, uh, if, you don't, if, you can't, if you don't get a handle and fight back on radical Islam, in your own country, America, he said, they'll take you down like they're taking all these other countries down around the world. Yeah, I think that's exactly what the plan is, which is why you can't <clears throat> criticize Islam. It's okay to criticize Christians and call them insane looney tunes, but if you said the same thing about Islam, you'd probably get arrested. Uh, and now that we're, we're hearing about they're teaching our young children all about Islam, but they won't teach them about the Lord Jesus Christ. So uh, I, I think this is, uh, you know, the book, the book of Revelation says that America becomes the house of every unclean bird and foul religion in the world. Uh, the Supreme Court ruled the United States back in the 1800s twice that we were a Christian nation. Obama comes along and says we're no longer a Christian nation, and he was actually telling the American people the truth. But here's the problem. When you get your blessings, Deuteronomy chapter 28, read the blessings, and then you turn around and give the finger to the Lord, you're going to get all the curses. And we have inherited almost all the curses and the curses state that these curses are going to remain until we are totally destroyed and so i don't believe all this hocus pocus that america is going to be great again if anything we may have us um how do we call that when a person is dying they give one last final rally and then they perish we could be in a rally but we're going to perish and I've been warning people about that for the last 25 years, and people don't like to hear that. Well, it doesn't matter whether you want to hear it or not. Truth is truth. People don't want to hear about the straight gate. They don't want to hear about the narrow way that Jesus brought with him. It's grace that brought a narrow way. It's grace that brought a straight gate. We don't deserve either one. Uh, when you go visit, say, President Trump, you call ahead, you make an appointment, you get vetted, and if you're invited, you go and follow the protocol of that invitation. You don't jump the fence and run into the White House because you'll be shot. We're not dealing with the President of the United States. We're dealing with the God who created the entire multiverse. And yet Christians and the world seem to think they can do whatever they want and they can believe whatever they want and they do not have to follow the protocols that Jesus Christ brought with him. It's an amazing form of insanity, but then again, I guess you'd have to declare, according to the Bible, humanity is totally insane, blinded, in a prison house, but doesn't know it, doesn't want to know it, doesn't want to know the truth, hates the truth, will always hate the truth. Um, anyway, enough that. <laughs> People in Venezuela, though, will tell you about power outages, Larry. And they didn't that happen all over again? Yeah, uh, that's happened about, it's, it's going on for about the third time. Every time they seem to get their power back on, uh, something knocks it out again, and this could be a run for what's going to happen in America when they decide, and that's the powers that be, decide to bring this nation down. Uh, you know, it's hard to get people to understand that uh, a lot of times, like places like Ukraine and Syria and uh, Venezuela, they really are test cases. And uh uh, I'll tell you what I was thinking when you was talking. You was talking about how we just basically gave the Lord the finger. In other words, we've we've told the uh, the Creator of the of everything that we know uh, to literally leave the country. We don't want anything to do with Him. And uh, what's interesting about that is, uh, 
you know, Islam's welcome. The ambassadors for Islam is welcome. And the United Nations and all of those people are welcome in the United States. But guess what? The ambassadors, and I'm not talking about preachers, okay? Forget preachers. I'm talking about the real spiritual ambassadors for Christ that's living in the United States and operating in this country, mostly in the highways and the byways, way out of what you would say sight of most Americans. Uh, they are not welcome, and they are most hated. It, isn't that interesting? Yeah, it's it's, uh, it's kind of like a reversal. Like the Lord said, good becomes evil, evil becomes good. So uh, this is exactly what's happening. And I know a lot of the older folks that listen in are having trouble understanding what, what has happened to this world around me. It's not the world I grew up in. And I can understand that. I identify with that because when I was growing up, uh, you didn't have any, in fact, it was basically Christian in the rural districts. And there was no persecution per se. This is something that, uh, you know, Satan has engineered, and Jesus warned about it in his word that, uh, that they were going to come for us. And uh, I, I have no idea whether the church will escape some of this or whether they're going to go through part of it. I would prepare for going through part of it, and uh, I think we're already involved in it myself. Uh, Islam is being promoted. I think they're using Islam, and then they're going to turn right around deep state. I'm talking about global deep state is using the Muslims and Islam to do their dirty work. And when that has finally been done, they will turn on Islam, and they will kill every Muslim they can get their hands on. This is what, this is how they operate. This is how they work, and um, it's 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 uh, it's just too bad to watch humanity doing what it's doing. It doesn't seem to be able to lift itself out of the morass of the frequency matrix. <laughs> you you know it's uh, it's just too bad. Here's another headline: If you are not paying attention, the world-ending storm of a third world war is gathering in Venezuela. Isn't that interesting, a headline, Larry, compared with what you just said about it? Well, it, it, it really is, uh, Stuart. And matter of fact, Dave Hodges put out an alert, and I can't vet it particularly, but he says a DHS agent uh given him a revelation, basically, of what's really going on on the southern border, said that, uh, and again, I can't vet it, but I did send you a copy of the article, Stuart, uh, yes. He indicates that this uh, DHS agent said the the reason all of these extra hundreds of DHS agents are rushing to the southern border is not because of uh, illegal aliens coming across the border. It has to do with uh, a possible terrorist cartel dirty bomb, a nuke coming through uh, through the terror lines and the drug cartels through our border that they probably have uh, information on. What do you think? Well, in the final end of it, they've done the false flag routine in small doses, and it really hasn't affected anything. You know, they have all these shootings, and, and then they you hue and cry for the guns, and that has not worked. They're going to have to resort to something really, really big to get this to work. And so, yeah, I wouldn't. It would not surprise me at all if a major city all of a sudden uh, had a mushroom cloud over it. This is how they operate. Deep state could care less. They want uh, everybody listening. They want you all dead. I don't care if you're deep state yourself. They want you dead. Humanity, they want dead. That's what Satan's after. He wants to, you to bow down and worship him, but in the minute you do, the sword comes down and cuts your head off. I don't think people realize Satan's ultimate goal is to take back planet Earth and destroy humanity. That's his goal. He is highly infuriated that God created mankind and gave what Satan thinks is his to Adam and Eve. That's why he uh, deceived them. Now, he's got the world back in a spiritual sense, but he wants it back in the physical sense. It's not going to work. We know from the Bible it's not going to work, but that doesn't mean he's not going to try it. 
And it's kind of like CERN. What in the world are they doing at CERN? Well, nobody knows for sure, but I'm, I got a feeling the Lord knows what they're doing. And uh, it's not going to work. Uh, here's another headline. Uh, it comes from the Havana Times. So this is out of Cuba. Venezuelans storm the border as Colombia warns Russia. A group of persons crossing into Colombia on the Simon Bolivar International Bridge were blocked by the Venezuelan military. So why are they leaving? Do they really have the inside story that we are going to attack? And this would trigger World War III. If we attack in Venezuela, we're attacking China and we're attacking Russia, both of which have told us, don't do it. What do you think? Well, well it, it's kind of interesting, and I'll read one of Hal Turner's uh, posts. Uh, what hmm. I was thinking, though, when I talked about the uh, dirty bomb, if we needed a false flag, and this is what Maduro's saying, if there is a dirty bomb that comes from the south, wouldn't that be the perfect thing to blame on Maduro and Venezuela and Russia and China to actually start a war with Venezuela? Uh, Absolutely. It really would, and... Now, here's some some intelligence that just came out. It says, Venezuela armed forces on full alert against imminent warfare actions by U.S. forces. U.S. is using cybernetic and electromagnetic war weapons against the infrastructure in Venezuela. Maduro has mobilized 51,000 defense unit members uh, reporting that the U.S. plans to assassinate him and members of his regime. So basically what Maduro is warning is the fact that uh, we're going to try to kill him, kill members of the Maduro regime, and infiltrate and attack uh, Venezuela. So they are planning on a war. Uh, What's interesting with, uh, you know, you've got different groups there like uh, the Cubans, Iranians, Hezbollah, Russia, China. Doesn't it sound like all over again, the same old scenario or regime change like Syria? Yeah, and uh, the Lord takes a very, very dim view of that. And he says in uh, in Habakkuk, or Habakkuk, however you want to pronounce it, if you go in there, it's in the Old Testament, folks, it's very, very interesting what he says. He says about those, you know, that America, Babylon, goes into these nations uh, goes in for a regime change, and we had uh, Wesley Clark, who was head of NATO, came out and verified that that's what he was told by Deep State, that they wanted to topple. I think he listed like five or seven nations that they wanted to topple uh, regime change. Well, you know what the Lord says about that? He says, do you think those that you spoiled, do you think they will not come back and spoil you? Uh, When you read the prophecies against America, we are encircled, and they decide, whoever they are, the world leaders and and, and whatnot, that it's time for us to go down. We go down with a bang, and we're destroyed, literally, from coast to coast, east to west. And that doesn't include, of course, all the earth changes that I think are, are headed our way. Uh, we maybe you get some time. We can get into some of those earth changes, but uh, I don't know. I, I just think that uh, this is probably how they're going to try and start uh, the Armageddon project. Uh, they will have war there. They'll have war in the Middle East. Probably war in the South China Seas. And we're kind of uh, prodding, in spite of all the world trade business that Trump's involved with, trying to get trade with China. We are kind of provoking China. We've been sailing some ships through. um, It is international waters, and we have every right to do it, but it's kind of provoking things. And please please don't forget uh, our good friend Kimmy the Whiz Kid over there in uh, North Korea and his nukes and his missiles. Uh, They're still there, folks. He hasn't done a thing. It's kind of like the border. You hear all this rhetoric. Oh, we're going to we're going to block the border. We're going to shut it down. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. Meanwhile, 
hundreds, if not thousands upon thousands of people are coming across our border basically unhindered. Oh, well, we're going to give Mexico a year. This is all deliberate, willful scamming of the American people. I don't think they have any intention of shutting down the border. And it may be simply because the Lord doesn't want the border shut down. Remember, the Lord said in Jeremiah, I'm going to fill you with aliens, fifth column, military types, and they're going to come in, and they're going to take up arms against you from within. And at the same time, you will be attacked from without. And we go down with a thud. And I don't think that's very far off. This may well be the last and final wave in this business about the women and the children. That's just cover. It's all cover, folks. It's a scam. The American people are being scammed by their own government, and they evidently can't believe it. They just can't grasp what Bible says. Psalm 2 does not exempt the governments of the world. It's all a collusion. Talk about collusion. They couldn't find any with Trump. But the Bible says there is collusion of the world leaders. And they conspire against the Lord and against his anointed. And uh, that means Jesus Christ, God the Father, the Holy Spirit. they got to get rid of them. The United Nations is uh, uh, antichrist to its very, very core. And uh, always has been and always will be. So anyway, you know, we're watching... We're watching the demise of the United States. It's just kind of sad to watch because most people don't even know it is happening. Uh, They're sitting back twiddling their thumbs. Any of them help Donald Trump? No. Even the ones who voted for him. Are they helping Donald Trump? Are they flooding uh, the Democrats and the Republicans with emails? We're going to impeach every one of you if you don't start towing the line, nothing, nothing, nothing. He can't do it by himself. And if he had good intentions, he's being stymied and he's being walled in by deep state. And no matter who he selects, they get to him. And I'm I'm sure probably Trump himself was taken in the back room by Satan and just told this is how we do it. And, uh, you know, if you want to live, you want your family to live, this is how you're going to do it. Uh, This is how they operate. Life means nothing to these people. This is a turf war. Satan wants planet Earth back. And he's going to do whatever it takes to get it back, even if it takes thousands of years, which it has. Time doesn't mean anything to someone who lives forever. Anyway, enough of that. What do you got else, Larry? You said something about Bible codes that were kind of interesting. Well, I was going to mention also, and I sent you a notice today on a new movie that came out in 2018 that just came out on DVD. And yes, I saw that notice. Heaven, Heaven's War is the name of it. And it, it's really interesting because there's very little Christian or inspired movies being made right now. And this one snuck out. I got a copy of it, and I posted a trailer today on my blog. But mm-hmm. what's so interesting is, you know, you, you talk about what we're all seeing with our eyes all around us, the warfare and the troubles and the battles and the, the, the conspiracies and the intrigue, et cetera. But in this movie, this is the first movie I've seen where you get to simultaneously watch uh, combat, mortal combat and immortal combat going on side by side in different dimensions or, in other words, in the seen and the unseen simultaneously. It's really an incredible movie, and I tell people uh, Heaven's War is the name of it. But uh, I was going to mention also uh, that two things real quick and get your opinions on them. Number one, uh, you know, we've kind of took our eye off North Korea a little bit, and there's a new post out today by Hal Turner says, North Korea building new submarine with ballistic missile launch capabilities at their Shinpo shipyard. They haven't even slowed down. And then on the other hand, you mentioned the U.N. and the leadership of the U.N. Uh, The U.N. just got escorted basically out of Libya. Uh, If you'll remember, and I know most people do remember, under Obama and Hillary, 
you're in Ben Gaza and Ben Gazi and et cetera. Uh, remember, there were some UN attacks, and the UN set up a government over Libya, a UN government, if you will, a new world order government. Well, something's happened that's not being reported in the news. Uh, Hal Turner put it out first, and I verified it by this evening late with two or three different news sources. Uh, it says Tripoli, Libya, under attack now. Forces with General Haftar, National Army, invading from the Axis. Says, uh, says uh, uh, they have the Axis has taken uh, the Tripoli airport, and they're moving on the city now. Says General Haftar. Army is moving to oust the UN created government of national accord uh, that has been established since Gaddafi's overthrow. And what's so interesting is uh, this General Haftar, he is supported and his army is supported by Saudi Arabia and Russia. And <laughs> under their support, he is now taking over the country of Libya and taking down the capital, Tripoli, as we speak, without any mainstream media being involved, telling you anything's even going on in Libya. And ironically, uh, the U.N. Uh, Secretary Guterres, I believe is his name, uh, went to speak with the general to stop him from his attacks, and he advised the U.N. to leave Libya, that he was taking it back. So here you've got Russia one more time, Russia's all over the world working right now behind the scenes. Yeah, that's fascinating because, uh, well, I want to get back to your movie that you were mentioning. Uh, it reminds me so much of we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers in the high places. It's a spiritual war, an unseen war. It just simply manifests itself through the idiotic stuff that mankind does. And uh, when I say idiotic, it really is idiotic. I, you know, we're, we're very self-destructive people. Yeah, it's amazing how self-destructive we actually are. Even as individuals, we, we tend to gravitate towards things that we shouldn't eat, we shouldn't drink, we shouldn't do. We just love to, you know, all the things that are bad for us, we love to do. Uh, self-destruction it's unconscious but satan is the prince and power of the air he runs uh ramshot i guess one could say over the spirits of mankind and uh, evidently that movie which i have not seen but uh it sounds to me like you're watching what is manifesting physically but you're also seeing the principalities and powers in their battle yeah, amazing stuff and maybe this is, yeah, you know, this is good timing, really, isn't it? Yeah, it, it, it's incredible timing, Stuart. And what's so interesting is you, you at the same time you're seeing, and this movie plays out in a type of almost a uh, Trump administration scenario in Washington, D.C., tying in Congress and deep corruption, tying in the vaccines and the, the, the pharmaceutical plots involved with the vaccines. I mean, this thing is really deep. If you if you watch, I sent you a, a trailer of it to watch, and uh, it's called Heaven's War. And you're as you it's simultaneous as you're watching it play out in the natural. In, in other words, bombs and guns and and conspiracies and and all of this stuff that's going on in the natural realm right around us. What we can see at the same time, you're seeing. Uh, the forces of good and evil battle and go to warfare all around us in the unseen realm. It's all happening at the very same time. And the title basically is Heaven's War, A Battle Rages for Every Soul. And uh, you'd love it. It's really, really good. Yeah, it is. Uh, you know, and it really is a battle for, for every soul. It's one of the reasons I wrote Frequency. This is a real battle, folks. When when Jesus Christ wrote the seven letters to the seven churches, at the very end of each one, he said, to the overcomer will I grant this or that. Read it for yourself. Look up what the word overcome means, overcomer. It'll shock you as to what it actually means. And uh, this is a real war. It is a real battle. 
And that is why the Lord said, ask, seek, knock, strive, because you're going to have to focus. And, and the people have, they have bought into this stuff of the preachers, teachers, and evangelists of America today. How anybody could believe that that the Lord Jesus Christ would reward an evangelist with jet airplanes, airports, uh, huge mansions. Come on. Come on, folks. Why are you supporting these people? It is a scam. Their damnation slumbers not. They're making a mockery out of Jesus Christ while they use his name. It's, it's just amazing what they're doing. And the American people or whatever, I don't know how they can even think that that is what Jesus would approve of or, or, or anything else. Remember what the Lord said, if you're telling the truth, you'll be hated, you will be reviled, and you will be persecuted. How come all these people are so loved and so popular? There's something wrong. <laughs> so, yeah, that yeah, movie spirit. might tell you what's wrong. I don't know if it I'll goes into what, that spirit. sort of <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, uh, I was going to say that uh, I really thought of your new book, Frequency, when I saw that movie because it seems to link right into Frequency because so much of the uh, warfare, it's almost like the Psalm 2 war, which has been going on for thousands of years. And, yes. and, you know, we live out a few moments of time in that Psalm 2 war when all around us warfare of the Psalm 2 war is ongoing in dimensions we can't even imagine, and it's happening today all around us, and we're not even aware of it. Yeah, and it's accelerating. The only thing that we can say is we can see it in uh, what Satan's doing. Here's a headline. I just want you <laughs> I'd like to have your comment on this one. Democrats in the U.S. House of Representatives are demanding to know why Fox News did not publish a story prior to 2016 election about an alleged affair years before between porn star Stormy Daniels and Donald Trump. So really what they're now saying is they want and they're demanding any documents relating to this sounds like Orwellian uh, what was the name of that thing? The uh, Commissioner of Truth? These people, yeah. folks, if you allow these people to continue, I can tell you what's going to happen to you. If you don't vote and, and or write and get these people out, it's going to be horrendous what's coming. Probably going to be well, horrendous so anyway. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, so, so much of what you're saying is very true, Stuart. I can't believe the American people can't talk back, but they can't, apparently. But what's so interesting, you know, you've got an, an entire corrupted, uh, I guess I, I call it basically a communist news network out there called mainstream media, and and here they are. They're worried about a rich man that goes to a woman for hire, a lady of the night, if you will, under different names, and, and has sex with her, and pays her for it. She never complains. She took the money. He goes on his way, and then suddenly they pull this this out of the hat like it's a rabbit. Come on. Yeah, and you know, and when you look at the presidents like Kennedy and the rest of them, they all kind of uh, go down that pathway. And I guess it's just part of you know being the ruler and and all of that. It's just, uh, but what. I know from a Christian perspective, the Lord obviously disapproves of all that sort of thing. But they have singled out Trump, and they're going after him no matter what. And uh, it's it's unfair. It's not right. I'm not saying the guy is uh, any, uh, what do I say, a shining white in armor, you know, or anything like knight in armor. He's not. And... Um, I have no idea what his true motives are. I can only go by uh, what I'm watching the Democrats do, and this is all part of a plan to destroy the United States. It's a time-honored communist plan. They do it all the time. Ruler against ruler. Violence in the land. Divide and conquer. 
That's exactly what's going on. They're dividing up people into a domestic emotional situation, which Larry and I have talked about before. This is a domestic it is not based upon reason and logic. It is based upon emotions. And I believe uh, d demonic activity is reaching an all-time high. If you go into the book of uh, Enoch, it talks about how the demons will stir up the people and, and literally kill them physically by warfare by any means possible. And uh, it's, it's just too bad to watch. And people really, you got to pray your heads around yourself because the demonic activity is increasing by leaps and bounds. And I know Larry knows all about that. I've had to uh, deliver some people from uh, uh, demonic activity. It's, it's real. And it has nothing to do with the people or whether they're bad, evil, good, or whatever. Uh, once they get a hold of a person, and it, it is nasty, as I'm sure Larry will tell you, because he's done some of that himself. And these people, these entities are very powerful, and they mean business. They'd kill everybody if they could get away with it. What do you think, Larry? Oh yeah, I, I totally agree. Uh, if they wasn't, if these evil entities were not restrained, and we know that they are, or there wouldn't be a human race. Matter of fact, right. that really is the that is the plan is to eradicate the human race, and it may be through AI and uh, the hybrids, but uh, that's the plan. Yeah, and it's an ugly plan, but uh, people are just totally comatose. They, I don't know. I don't know what you do to try to alert people. Uh, we got like you were talking about the vaccines, and that is a total scam operation and uh, i don't know it's it this is uh here's another headline before we close down china's social credit system it's coming to the united states like we have warned uh this is the mark of the beast system that's coming over it's not the mark of the beast yet but it will be very very quickly uh what else have you got uh quickly on the bible code before we shut down yeah, I was just going to mention real quick, and I know we're close to, I just mentioned them, and maybe we can go over them next week, but yeah. uh, one of the yeah. interesting ones is uh, Joe Biden is encoded with inappropriate groping, and we'll read that next week because it clearly lays out Joe Biden and what the Torah codes think of him. Another one which is really interesting is uh, Barry Rothman put a new one up at the, at the end of March. Mars is teeming with primitive life and the codes that stand behind it, and how also a lot of this life was prevented from being, in other words, uh, it says that Barack Obama delays the Mars issue. Why? And it appears, uh, here, I'll read these numbers real quick. There's six of them in that code. It says yep. delaying Mars, alien, dust from the heavens, <clears throat> be Obama, war. So uh, wow. we can go over these later, but they really, Barry's coming out from some interesting stuff, and he claims that uh, he's working with NASA closely now and that they are going to let him release some of his uh, uh, data, reference the Mars we don't know and the life that's there very soon. And he said he'd come on with us in May for a show in some of this new release of data that's never been released before. Okay, boy, that sounds great. Anyway, folks, um, things are moving along very, very fast. We're coming up on April 11th, which is another key date. is spelled out in the heavens by the Lord. We don't know exactly what it means. But uh, we're moving through this thing very, very fast. And uh, be ready for about anything. I mean, we have no idea what's coming down the pike. Uh, so... It's uh, it's an amazing time that we're living in, and just pray that every day be normal and that the Lord protect, because there's nothing else we can pray for, actually. It's all in the Lord's hands at this point, and uh, it's just too bad. Well, thanks a lot, Larry, for coming on. We'll try and get back on next week early if we can, and, and uh, prepare everybody, and heads up, your salvation draweth nigh. Anyway, good night, everyone. Take care of yourselves.